Hello traders and welcome back to another survival guide. Today we're going to be discussing something that can allow us to embolden our pre-existing futures trading knowledge or if we don't have any at all it will be definitely something that will be good to have in our arsenal. It is something that allows us to get a better view of the broader image of things in the marketscapes regardless of whatever it is that we wish to choose. Regardless of the asset there are things out there called macroeconomic indicators and today we're going to discuss the top 10 macroeconomic indicators, what they are, and at the end of this, hopefully you'll have an idea if any of them are worth your time. So stick around, let's learn about the top 10 macroeconomic indicators. Complementing a futures trading strategy with macroeconomic indicators really can bring it to the next level because it allows it to capture much broader market information. So we'll start off first with what macroeconomic indicators are, at least by the definition. And they are indicators that are pieces of economic data that reflect the economic health of a particular sector, country, or region. These statistics help evaluate the current situation as well as the future performance of the economy and the financial markets. Macroeconomic indicators are usually released by governments, national agencies, or sectoral organizations. These indicators can vary in frequency of release as well as their impact. For example, some indicators might have a specific release schedule like monthly, quarterly, or even annually. This allows investors, analysts, and traders alike to prepare and come up with a plan for the different potential scenarios that might arise once this information is released. There are three types of macroeconomic indicators. We have leading, lagging, and coincident. The leading indicators are the ones that are trying to predict future performance and forecast where an economy might be heading. They generally are the preferred benchmark for governments that are designing macroeconomic policies. Then we have lagging indicators, which are what you're probably thinking. They represent historical performance of an economy and their results change post factum. They mainly serve for confirmation. And then finally, the third Third group is coincident indicators, and they unite indicators that reflect real-time events. The reason that traders care about macroeconomic indicators in short is because it provides a better view of what's going on. It is more information that is representative of the overall state of things, which in turn should allow a trader to make a more informed decision. Now the reason that we're all here, the coveted list of the top 10 macroeconomic indicators as it pertains to us as futures traders. The first is going to be GDP projections. The growth of domestic product reflects the overall value of goods and services produced in a particular economy, indicating whether it's slowing or if it's growing. Its results and projections are primary tools for analysis of the current and future state of an economy. Positive GDP results and projections signal a flourishing economy, while negative ones indicate a potential economic contraction. Then we have interest rates, which some of us might know all too well. The case of interest rates as a macroeconomic indicator is an interesting one since they can serve both as a leading and a lagging indicator. They are a leading indicator in the sense that once they are changed, the economy reflects the new rate. They can also be lagging since the decision for their change is usually in response to an existing economic imbalance. Interest rates serve themselves really as levers to control the economy. They are increased to stop it from growing too quickly, and at the same time, they are lowered to boost spending and avoid stagnation. Interest rates are an essential factor in determining the price of futures contracts. Next up, we have periodical economic reports. Traders of futures contracts on commodities, indices, currencies, or bonds often keep an eye on the annual, biannual, quarterly, or even monthly reports of these since they reflect the state and projected trajectory of the economy. In terms of the broader state of the U.S. economy, for example, notable reports in this category include things like the Beige Book or the Fed's Monetary Policy Report or the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis releases of pretty much any type. They are reports that are important and they're worth paying attention to. 
Next up, we have sectoral reports. Based on the asset you are trading, it is essential to note that different data sets have more influence in different sectors and countries. Let's say that we're interested in trading corn futures. The US is by far the world's largest producer and exporter of corn. As a result, we should probably keep track of key reports like the USDA report, the planting intentions report, and the grain stocks report. This can all give us some insight into what to expect as we go forward. Then we have the earnings estimates as well as the share prices. Looking at the stock market performance is a useful way to predict futures contracts' underlying asset dynamics that might be going on. And an example of this, when an economy is booming, businesses are healthier and more likely to report higher earnings. On the other hand, when an economy starts slowing down, the stock market is usually the first to react. So this is a really, t really very easy one for most people to understand. Next up, we have the inflation, spending power, and retail purchases. Consumer purchasing power dynamics are another great reflection of the overall state of the economy because high spending power indicates a stable economy and market confidence, whereas the opposite would bode for the opposite. For example, the Purchasing Manager Index, which we refer to as the PMI report, is often used by Wall Street analysts who consider it a good indication for GDP projections. Another widespread measurement of consumer spending is the Consumer Confidence Index by the conference board. This is something that's going to allow us to get a better idea of what's going on in the inflation spending power and retail purchases area. Then we have currency strength, which is really self-explanatory. This is another lagging indicator that can also be attributed in some ways to the leading category. Currency strength is a significant signal of an economy's stability and usually changes in response to political and economic circumstances. This is a relatively easy one for us to understand because it just determines how far a single dollar or whatever metric of currency we're measuring will go. Then we have the real estate market sales. The real estate market, including home building, construction spending, and home purchases, is a very reliable leading indicator of the state of the economy and where it's heading. Among the most reliable reports on the matter in the U.S. at least is the monthly new residential construction report by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. It can be a good indicator of the state of the economy since an increasing number of issued building permits and construction completions can indicate an economy embracing an upward trajectory. Then we have commodity prices. Commodity prices, there's really a strong link between the state of the economy and commodity prices themselves. The prices of base metals, for example, are closely linked to the outlook for overall economic health since they tend to go up when the economy is in good shape and they tend to drop in times of recession. And finally, we have the yield curve as well as the recession risk indicators. The slope of the yield curve reveals the bond market's expectations about short-term interest rates based on factors like economic activity as well as inflation. The bond market is an excellent leading indicator and a gauge of market expectations. Looking at the yield curve can give a trader a reflection of the short and long-term market outlook. The performance of shorter-term bonds is often influenced by central bank decisions on interest rates. On the other hand, long-term bonds are also impacted by interest rates, but primarily by factors like inflation and economic growth. During times of positive economic outlook, the yield usually has a positive upturn. On the other hand, when economic outlook worsens, the yield flattens. An inverted yield curve usually indicates that economic growth will drop significantly, raising the chance for central banks to slash interest rates. It is important to remember that macroeconomic indicators, while extremely powerful, are not intended to be used as a standalone tool. It's always going to be a better idea to use a multitude of tools that cover various sectors because generally in the trading world, each tool covers one specific niche or one specific data set or one specific portion of information and it's important to get a complete view that way we're making the most informed decisions now information overload is very real but at the end of the day information is only going to be as valuable as the person who is using it now that you know what the top 10 macroeconomic indicators are do me a favor click that like and subscribe button if you are watching this on youtube that way we can keep coming out with educational content for you all out there at no cost good luck i'll see you all in the next one and happy trading